right, we're back. This is John. Hey, it's Paul. And it's Eric. And it's What If Geeks. And today we are going to review The Boys. But we got a special guest because we need help reviewing this crazy show. <laughs> We've got Eric's aunt, Anne, on the line with us. Say hi, Anne. Hi, Anne. Oh, <laughs> She's starting off strong. That's right. <laughs> <coughs> I do the dad jokes, thanks. <laughs> So, then there goes that sound. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you gotta be careful. Gotta I that, know. Gotta get that phone positioned just right. All right. So, <laughs> I guess, what, a quick uh, recap for, or well, not a recap, but a quick intro for people that don't know. Um, yeah, so I guess we'll do this. Uh, we'll do this in stages. We'll do the non-spoiler part up front. We'll do a little review of what the show's about for anybody that's never heard of it. We'll just give our generic no spoiler opinion and then we'll actually jump into the episode we'll give everybody a warning before we get there yeah, um, it's not going to be a very long non-spoiler thing because no, wow. we're dying to talk about every, yeah. all the crazy stuff that happens in exactly the show. exactly all right so uh as a recap then so uh the boys is uh it's an exclusive amazon prime um there was only eight episodes in the first season um it is a like superhero fiction meets like a really dark raunchy comedy uh, sort of thing and the synopsis of it um, a group of vigilantes try to take down corrupt superheroes and the Vought Corporation um, who all the superheroes work for and then um, the superheroes are basically the villains in this show and the boys are kind of like anti-heroes right uh, yeah. sort of yeah. in, in a way uh, to the public the the superheroes look like heroes but in reality they're shady and corrupt and they do all kinds of messed up stuff right yeah and it's essentially what like what real realistic people would be like with superpowers if they were treated like celebrities yeah right like yep the, the kardashians with flight and laser eyes <laughs> yep exactly so this has a, a tvma rating um there's a shit ton of terrible language, just like the show. Actually, it's far worse than this. I think they, mm -hmm. I think within the eight episodes, they probably dropped the f bomb fifty times and I don't know what you're talking about, you fucking at cunt. least yeah. twenty. <laughs> yeah, it, it's really ridiculous. Uh, and then there's quite a bit of sexual content. Although we'll get into they do something a little different in that avenue. There's no there's no gratuitous sex scenes like there are in a lot of those uh, exclusive shows that you see on HBO or Showtime. They do something a little bit. Uh, off the rails, I guess. Um, so this is based on a comic comic book series that was written by uh, Garth Ennis. Ennis, sorry, um, and that thing ran for like twelve straight series, I guess. Yeah, you'd call it's like it. issue yeah. seventy something. Yeah, like yeah. like six or seven years. I'm seventy two issue issues. fifteen now. It it ends at issue issue seventy two, and it did complete all the story arcs within that time frame. So it is over over, but yeah. the show is not quite based on the comic i mean it is it's the same characters they've maybe thrown an extra character or two but yeah but the story arc is it's different something enough different. you yeah. enjoy it right yeah. so um this is produced by seth rogan of course who did preacher if you're into comic book stuff but then he also has all those raunchy comedies that we've talked yeah, about good, good boys, boys and... being recent one neighbors cock blockers knocked up it was a whole bunch of them and then um Evan Goldberg co-created this with him, who has done basically the exact same shows and movies. <clears throat> they're they're like writing partners. Yeah, so yeah, pretty much. I don't think there's anything that uh, Evan has done that Seth Rogen wasn't involved in at all, like at all. And so um, Eric Kripke, who's most famous for Supernatural show, um, did all the screenplay for this. And he did that with Garth, Garth Ennis, who wrote the original comic book. So it's at least somewhat true to form, right? Yep. Um, I think that's really it for the for the recap of it, unless I missed anything. Um, no, I think you got it. What do you think, Paul? No, I think that hits it. Um, and then we'll go into the. You want to go into the cast and? Yeah. So um, without listing it all out, I guess. So or at uh, least the, the character list. Yeah, yeah the yeah. character list, right? So uh, the superheroes, the the main group of superheroes, and there are quite a few of them outside of this group, but but none you really see that much. But there's seven main ones, and those, they're called the seven, yeah. and so they're part of Vought's. Uh, Vod is the corporation who sponsors the superheroes, as it were, right? Yeah. Makes they, all the money It's like their of version of the Justice League. Yeah. It's somewhere between the Avengers and the Justice League. Yeah. yeah. It's like a mashup. So there are essentially seven main people in that. Um, the first and the, and the leader of it being Homelander, who is like mostly like Superman, but he has this sort of like uh, all-American guy 
thing going on that makes yeah. him a little bit like Captain America. Of yeah. course, he's not virtuous at all. He just seems You'll like it. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah, this is something you it's figure out public, in episode yeah, one, and, and it gets face. worse as we go on. But publicly, he's very Captain America esque in the, in the sense that you know he he stops at uh, like every police officer in the in the show and so, stuff. Like, oh, you're the real hero. You guys are the real heroes. Yeah. Give it so, a thumbs up. <laughs> yeah. You bet. Now. So you got Queen Maeve, who's basically your Wonder Woman. Yep. Um, you got A Train, who's essentially the Flash. Um, Black Noir, who is, I don't know, he's a little bit like Batman, but he also visually is like Black Panther. He's yeah. kind with of a, like. With a, a little snake eyes thrown in because yeah, he never snake speaks. Eyes. Yeah. Because he never speaks. Yeah, he, he has, I think he has like one serious, like actual line the whole first eight episodes when he runs into Starlight in the hallway. And the, it's really just like a. Does he say anything? Yeah, he says like two sentences to her yeah. and then he walks off. <laughs> I don't remember him talking. I don't remember him talking. I didn't think he even spoke. Yeah, I don't think he did. I think I think Eric's having a seizure again. All right, it's possible. It's possible. <laughs> yeah, he only one character. I have to go back and look now. Who he was. I think he jumped right past my favorite character, the Deep. Okay, so there's the Deep, who's the Aquaman knockoff, who's also, at least in the TV version, like the most... He's the worst of the group, I think, as far as... Go ahead. I'll save it for the spoiler stuff. Okay. But, but yeah, but I've got <laughs> it. I've got an argument to that. Okay. Well, as yeah, far as corruption, maybe, I think he's pretty bad. He's pretty but bad. But I think maybe he's not. Yeah. Maybe he's not the worst. Well, he's gonna get. He's gonna change, I suppose. After he, what goes he on, is but. the joke that Aquaman had always been up until yes. Jason Momoa starts playing Aquaman. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. He is the '60s Super Friends Aquaman. Yes. Yeah. And, and for, every joke that was made about him. Yes. And, yeah. and for what it's worth, he is a pretty big <clears throat> deviation from the comic version, which. Wears his mask most of the time and doesn't yeah, he's got a diving, say anything. Like a diving bell. Yeah. And yeah. he is the joke of what Aquaman always was to DC, which was, or, or was to the Justice League, which he never does anything. Right. right. He's just kind of off in the background. He's just another guy. So they didn't do that with him, though, in the show. They made it a little different. So. No. Um, but I think the movie Aquaman made a joke of him enough. <laughs> True. Probably. Um, translucent. Um, I don't know really who he's modeled after, and he's not uh, actually part of the comic. So right, right. So yeah. you had. I, saying, uh, I never remember seeing him. In the you comic had at all. Uh, in the comic. You had Jack from Jupiter. So he's like some weird guy from another planet thing. Uh, More of a Martian Manhunter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Martian Manhunter. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Vision. Kind of. Yes. Okay, but he doesn't exist robot. here for whatever reason. Right. I guess they wanted to keep it all to Earth and, and pseudo realistic. I don't know why. Well, as we but... get into the spoilers, I think I figured out why Translucent is there, so we can kind of get into all that right. later. So Translucent is, is, is an addition anyway that doesn't exist. And then you have Starlight, who is in the original. She's basically Supergirl, more or less. Yeah, yeah kind of. Sure. That was my so, thought anyway. Supergirl with sun powers. <laughs> yeah. Like the, like the Sentry, a female Sentry from Marvel. All right, and then you had um, Madeline Stillwell. She's not one of the seven, but um, she's played by Elizabeth Shue, like the one really famous actress, I think, in the whole in the whole series. Um, and she plays like the senior VP at, at Vought that runs all the superheroes and gives them all yeah. their terrible she's ideas. She's their handler. Yeah, mm -hmm. handler. That's a good way to put it. Yeah, because right. essentially they are all like celebrities, and their biggest thing is – and they get into it in the show. Their biggest thing is their reputation. Yep. They're always trying to do cover-ups. Yep. Stuff. And so then on the opposite side of it, you have your anti-heroes. You have the boys, right? Mm -hmm. and, and that team, unlike the comic where they all kind of start off together, minus Huey, I guess, um, these guys like sort of like build a team of sorts. I mean, they definitely give you the idea that there's a reunion between them, yeah. or at least some of them. But but then like they introduce the female way later. She was yep. part of the first ep issue yeah. in the comics. Um Anyway, so you've got Billy Butcher, who's played by Carl Urban, who is great, even though he is faking a Cockney accent and he's from New Zealand, <laughs> but uh, it still but works. But he's awesome. <laughs> and then you've got uh, Frenchie, who also a deviation from the comic. He is not like a crazy, crazy madman in the TV series. He's much smarter, and he has he thinks things out, mm -hmm. even though uh, even though Butcher sort of gives this impression that he's crazy. He's really not. And in the yeah. comic, he is Maybe definitely that later wild and crazy, and it doesn't make sense. He's insane. Yeah. <clears throat> um, what else do we have? Uh, mother's Milk. Mother's Milk, um, who I guess is, is pretty it, is much that like the a same. Nickname? No, my mother named me Mother's <laughs> yeah. Milk. <laughs> and then um, I guess that's is, I'm, I'm missing somebody. I'm missing somebody on the boys. Who am I forgetting? No. You've got them all. No, that's okay. it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, Huey. 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 The guy that joins. Yeah, you've got the list right in front of you. Yeah. Jesus. 
I don't. The pages are not in the right order. Look. It's oh, Eric fault. stopped learning how to read. It's on the back, dude. I got it. I got it. Oh, what is this? Proof prints front and back. What is this? Apparently, my printer does. Paper saver. <laughs> Save the planet, man. Come on. Yeah, really. jeez. <laughs> Welcome to 2019, you green bastard. Uh, all right. Um, all right. So that's it. So um, for what it's worth, season two of this has already been greenlit by Amazon. It was actually greenlit before the pilot even ran. Yeah. <laughs> so I yeah, guess they that's knew how much they, had they, gold. they loved it. Um, so uh, the season two is going to focus on... Um, what they reveal in the last episode of season one, which we'll get to in the spoilers. Um, it's going to be all the same cast for the most part, um, minus people that may be out for various reasons. Um, and then they're going to add in um, Giancarlo Esposito from Breaking Bad, who played Gus Fring. Um, so he's going to be Mr. Edgar. So he's going to be the head of the, of the okay. lot corporation in, in nice. season two and then jesse usher who plays a train actually had a heart attack right after the end of the first season but he's supposedly totally good and he's going to come back uh, and it's really funny yeah. that he had a heart attack yeah the actor, like, yeah, had a, yeah, the actual yeah. actor right, had a heart on. attack Holy time God. out time out yeah yeah spoiler hang on so you know, i had to press pause on that one <laughs> don't do that not really I, I just had to slow you up there for a second We'll get into that. Yeah. So, oh, 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 I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. So the real actor had a heart attack, which is funny because of things that happened in the show is what I was going to say, but that's not giving anything away. <laughs> Hold on a second. The, real, the real guy had a heart attack? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jesse, Jesse Usher had a heart attack right after the end of the first season. No kidding. I didn't know that. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But he's, he's, he's supposedly I, I, totally good, and he's going to be back for season two. Look, uh, last chance. Is there anything non-spoiler we can say about the show outside of the fact that it's probably one of the best things I've seen in a long time? Well, we can we can do this. We can do opinions without giving spoilers real quick for anybody We have to hurry up because we're already yeah. there. We're like t- teetering on the edge of spoiler dump, so. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, Ann, what did you think? Just overall, no spoilers, Ann. Uh. First of all, it was amazingly awesome, and, <laughs> and uh, there's so much to unpack. There's just so much. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's crazy. It was really good, though. It's like you know when you get into those things that like it's like no, I, I gotta binge this. I gotta yes. I gotta watch the whole thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, they kept you wanting to keep watching more and more, and the things they do, you just can't believe they do them. So yep. you're like, oh, I gotta see what's coming next. Yeah, exactly. So we'll, of course, get into all that in the spoilers, but that's what kept me coming back. It's like every episode, there's something like, oh, shit, I did not see that coming. Yep. Holy hell. You know, and yeah. then you want to just see how it's going to play out. I, I thought I thought it was great. I thought the way they did this was excellent. There are a ton yeah. of times where I ended up with my mouth just wide open, like, I cannot believe they just did that. <laughs> yeah. And then, right, and then you got to watch the next one. I watched the last uh, episode six, seven, and eight last night till like uh, 1.30 in nice. the morning. Nice. It's it's very dark. It is definitely very dark. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's not going to be for everybody, but for anyone who likes dark, really dark sense. All right. If you're listening to this podcast, it's for you. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Right. If you like us, you will like this. Yeah. This is an amazing show. You got to go check it out. So season two is coming. So hurry up and go binge season one so you can get ready for it. And I think what's amazing is this could not have been made at any other time than this. And we've talked about this before when we've talked about like. You know, great stuff on streaming services and stuff like that. But but we're in this age now where because of streaming and because of Amazon and Netflix and, and everything that's got – like you can actually make this now where none of the networks would have made this before. No yeah. way you would have done a tenth of the stuff that's yeah. in this show. Maybe HBO would have done this prior to this, but maybe even not that. Yeah, sure. With all your streaming, you have avenues where they're willing to take a risk right. and dump good money into it because they know they'll get it back. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what they did with this one. Amazon killed it with this. Well, th- th- that's probably another factor too, not to get too far off topic, but it is easier now and cheaper now to do really cool special effects mm-hmm. and costumes and stuff that would have been harder ten years ago, way harder. Yeah. You know, it would have cost them a lot of money to do that for a series, and now it's it's easy. Yeah, relatively it, speaking. It's also yeah. interesting that we're in a we're in a place where we didn't do this before, where you would not have thought about superheroes in this way, right? Of up until now, superheroes have always been completely virtuous. Um, they never worried about their mer- their merchandising or their marketing or how many points did they get on the movie yeah. deal and that they were, sort of thing. They like, were in it to do good. Correct. And and now you see superheroes that, that not only are into that stuff, it's sort of all they care about. And it's interesting to watch heroes when you remove that, that – um, 
consciousness and and do good attitude and see what they would really be and and any you know they're not responsible for things that happen if they if someone gets hurt if they cause collateral damage like it's no big deal yeah all right cool so i think on that note spoiler time you bastards Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah all right so we're gonna get into spoilers so if you don't want to hear them just cut it off now because that's all that's left (laughs) go watch it and then come back and listen to the rest yeah you're gonna love it all right i think we've covered a few of these things already but i just wanted to start real (coughs) quick with differing how it differed from the comics for anybody that's watched or read them sorry so um We've already said this. The vulgarity is dialed back, even though it's still extreme. It's I think it's way yeah. dialed back from the comic book. Yeah. Like yeah. it's really, really raunchy in the comic book, and it's not just words; it's also actions. Um, from the yeah, from the get go, the yeah. uh, the whole issue with Starlight in the comic, like there's three of them. And they, yeah, they right. So it's not just the deep in the comic. It's it's, it's Homelander. Actually, the deep isn't even involved. No, it's Homelander, Homelander. Black Noir, and uh, the dude. What's his name? Uh, the Martian Manhunter looking guy. Is that is that the other or, one? No, it was A Train. No, it was A Train. No, it was A Train. Yeah, it was A Train. A Train, Homelander, and yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Homelander so, that starts it. And she thinks she's yeah. gonna get away from him, yeah. like by going to somebody else. Like, oh my god, he's like taking over by an alien. And they have their pants. And down. they're they've all got their pants down in front of her. Like, hey, yeah. And, and <laughs> Homelander's like, listen, we're not gonna force it on you, but if you don't do it, you're not gonna be part of the seven. Right. Yeah. You know, it, it, they make it really bad, and I think they they. They they did something similar in the show by pegging it on the deep and the way he did it, but it's definitely different. It's not as blatant. Yeah, I, I don't even know if blatant's the right word. It's just not as offensive. I think. Yeah, the comic was way <laughs> yeah. more offensive with it. <laughs> um, all and right, way so, more hilarious at the same time because you're like, holy shit! And then that's well, out the gate. That's like all they did the was gate. dial down the numbers, though. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, but I mean, it's so much worse when it's three <clears throat> dudes and that's her entry as opposed to one guy who's faking like he has some control here. You know what I mean? Right. It just feels so yeah. different. Like, yeah, I am in so, – so in the comic book, it's I am in charge. Do you want to be here? And these two guys that are with me, yeah, you're doing them too. Yeah. yeah. That, that still, makes like, it different than the deep sort of like faking oh, it. Oh, you had she a does crush it. on me? We'll yeah. get over here and do this. Yeah, yeah. yeah but it, you still it, – it's set up with her like – She's from Iowa, and she's she really wants to do good. And then here she gets her first day in this thing she's dreamt about her whole life. Immediately, right? Immediately is is uh, harassed slash assaulted yeah. at work. Yeah, and so her yeah, her it's still pretty bad. Her visceral reaction is exactly the same. That's exactly yeah. what happens in the comics. She goes and she freaking vomits, and yeah. she's really sick about it. And another difference, I suppose, by the end of the sixth episode maybe i can't remember what it was but she already had come back and like got herself mm-hmm. like yeah i'm gonna be this strong person now fuck these guys that doesn't happen in the comic either that draws out over multiple different issues uh, series uh, story arcs yep. before she gets herself back so they, they made it happen way way faster um the now, next how much of the comic have you actually read um i haven't no uh you just kind of couple dozen maybe okay. <laughs> all right because the one thing I was going to say um, that I kept waiting for in the show that they don't do uh, was – I'm hoping they do it in season two – was when uh, they established that like the boys are all on Compound V too. Right. But they're on like a pure version of it to kind of boost themselves up to be on par with – but they're not on par with the seven. They're on par with all the lesser heroes. Everybody that's beneath the seven, like there's multiple – teams out there right they're on par with those guys and that, that the whole the compound v thing allows them to fight with them and right because should there be a fight they would have been way out killed right, yeah right. which is what i was waiting for them to do that during the show at any time because i'm like they're gonna get killed yep and they, they did it very well where they don't but i was still waiting for it you yeah. know uh and that was where i was gonna say the thing with translucent came in because i think um they didn't want to in the comic, it's one of the guys from Teenage... Teenage Kicks? Kicks, yeah. Um, what's his name? Uh, Blarney the... Oh, Blarney Cock. Blarney Cock. <laughs> he kills him. Yep. Uh, what ha- Butcher injects Huey with the Compound V yeah. without him knowing. or and He's shocked. He's got this. So he has no idea what he's doing. And they immediately get into a fight with the Teenage Kicks guys. And... Out of just out of reaction and self defense, Huey lashes out and puts his fist right through uh, Barney Cox's chest yep. and kills him. That's 
that's like the first time like he does anything and goes, oh, okay. So they kind of treat the translucent murder the same way. Like, you know, he's like, don't, 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 don't. And he, yep. You know, it's kind of the same thing. So I think without incorporating all these teams at once in the show that try to scale down the, the story, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think that, but to still kind of tell the same story on a scaled down version, that's why they brought in translucent. Why they didn't include um, the vision looking dude. Yeah, I'm not sure. Know. But they also, they well, only had I guess eight, that wouldn't make seven. They only had eight episodes. And so they didn't really have time to kind of develop it the way they do in the comic, which is first they go after Teenage Kicks and expose all that crazy stuff that they're doing. Yeah. And then get on, right. Yeah, because there's a whole right side to, to that comic that's yeah. like not explored at all that I'm waiting for them to do. It's going to be freaking amazing. The, uh, how Compound V brings them back. Yeah. That's hilarious. Um, but the anyway. fir- but I think the first sort of jaw-dropping thing, and, and you get it in the first couple of pages of issue one of the comic, but you get it in the first, I don't know, 20, 25 minutes of the show, maybe not even, is A-Train running through Huey's girlfriend. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was immediate. Yeah. yeah. Maybe Which, five minutes in, something like that. Maybe not it's even. It's fairly not quick. It's, yeah. yeah, it's yeah, quick, he, quick. They do, the, they do the setup where he's like sort of a... You know, nobody working at a little no. electronic shop, and then his girlfriend yeah. pops in. You're like, "What? That's his girlfriend? Okay, fine." And then yeah. they start walking, Way and I think, yeah, "Yeah, it can't be ten minutes in." Yeah. When he runs in, when he runs through her, yeah, the jawbone going across. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like, "Wow!" And he's standing there holding her hands. Yeah, which which the, is go ahead. And the soundtrack. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like the Billy Joel song, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, perfect. Oh. Oh my god, it was epic! I, I actually love the way they did that moment. It was great. It was like, <coughs> that's probably what would happen if somebody's running at like the speed of sound right. and they hit somebody. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, she yeah, just, the blood globules were very realistic. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she going everywhere. Essentially, she splattered. She disintegrated. disintegrated. I, I mean, I don't know what else to call it, but no, that's what it was. She disintegrated. She was there was pulverized. only a couple of pieces of <laughs> bone yeah. left. Everything else was just yeah, in her hands. Yeah, in her hands. Yeah. yeah. That probably wouldn't have happened. I imagine he wouldn't have held on gently to those hands. Right. They, would have ripped, they would have ripped from his hands. Probably, probably, yeah. Yeah. But hey, yeah, it was a good Not effect. medically responsible. Yeah, there you go. But uh, totally yeah, like the, the difference there was like, I guess because he's running because he's on the compound V. They uh, In the comic, he was fighting somebody. Yeah. And he, run, he actually throws the guy through her mm-hmm. is what happens. Because you see like there's a split Ooh. shot of... The guy, like once it's once she's gone, then you see you realize that a train threw this dude through her. So so, and then um, once that happens, they sort of establish something really cool, which is basically like the liability side of it all, right? Like, oh well, that was great. Yeah. She was in the street, and he's a superhero. It was like it was something that you could realistically see happening if there were superheroes and right. there was a fuck up. Half step off the curb. A half step off the curb. Yeah, half step yeah, off the curb. she stepped in a curb. Well, I think, I think the, the way they, the way they put it is, yeah, yeah. They, 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 she stepped out into the street and then he's like, oh, it was a half fucking step. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, no, it was really good. Hey, in uh, the streets, in the street, man. <laughs> yeah, you, isn't that what we told his kids? Yeah, yeah. Stay out of the street. Don't you dare put a toe in that street. And, well, there you go. That's what you get, Robin. Anyway, <laughs> all right. So, so, so the next weird variance I had, which plays into one of the uh, the way they build a character, was the gender bend of Stillwell. So that's a dude in the comic, yeah, right. That's James Stillwell, and instead they've done Madeline Stillwell here. So that part of it isn't a big deal. But what's funny about it is that they make it part of Homelander's sort of personality traits, and they do this weird like relationship thing mm-hmm. Oedipus sort of strange yeah so I, that's exactly it's what really it weird it's, but it developed like it's not that in episode one it looks more like they're kind of involved in some way and then it grew like it's not until yeah I don't know three or four maybe even five where like she kind of unbuttons her blouse and he's laying in her lap and well there's well, a no, thing no, where there, he's a, watching her there's another breast, thing yeah well, pump the, her breast yeah because I think though what they're establishing is that he has looked at her as a mother figure, but exactly. again, the yeah. Oedipus complex. He yeah. still he wants her, but he also looks at her as a, a mother figure, and he's jealous as shit of that baby. baby. Right? He hates that baby. Yeah. He wants it dead. Yeah, he's jealous. Yeah, yeah. Very, very. I thought he was going to kill the baby at some point. 
I, I did thought too. He was too. I mean, technically, I thought he was no. too, Paul. well, we don't actually know that. That's something worth talking about later. But yeah, yeah, we don't know. We'll that get to that. Yeah, as, baby, as, we, as we spoil the rest of the shit. Yeah, I mean, so yeah. but but they made it. They 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 went so over the top with it though. Like, there's a point where before we know this exists, before we know this weird weird fetish relationship sort of exists where she's talking to him on the couch. This is early, I think first or second episode and her milk is leaking mm-hmm. Why she's talking to him. And then he looks and he's like, your you're milk leaking. is leaking yeah. or you're leaking or whatever. <laughs> she's like, Oh yeah. yeah like oh, we're already in the spoiler part, but as, as that plays out, there's, there's a reason for that. As you see Homelander as a, a baby later, right in the room with the men. Yes. He, right. He was not breastfed. Clearly. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> right, right, true. Yeah, he was raised without parents. Yeah, so I think that that's where that, that you know, edible complex or fetish comes in. That's why he's, like, jealous of the baby and and how he interacts with her and why he's watching her with her breast pumps and all the rest of that. Yeah. Yeah, he's trying to experience it all. Well, but as it, the way I saw it, as it first starts happening, you just think, okay – you're spending a lot of time with the baby. I thought it was like a time attention thing, not like a mothering, like you're paying all this attention to the I baby. Think- I want you to pay attention to me. Okay. And then it's later on when she does the, she unbuttons her blouse. She lays him down. He's like got his face right between her breasts sort of. And then she sticks like her finger in his mouth and he's sort of taking it like a, <laughs> like a bottle. And you're like, oh, that's messed up. Yeah. He, gets to be, he gets to be the baby. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, okay, that's messed yeah. up. I kind of caught on the moment. The, the first interaction between him and the baby, I caught on to what was going on. Like I was like, oh, okay. All right. He looks at her. I was like, I get it. I see what's going on here. But, it was, yeah, it was really fucked up. Uh, anybody else feel that this is like the first time um, they noticed that Elizabeth Shue kind of is getting older? Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I noticed that. Right. So I've I've always I mean, liked, don't get me wrong. I've always, I've always <laughs> liked her, but I mean, they it's, did it's that. showing. You know, she, but she was like got a quarter ounce of milk, and for her age, they even put that in the in. <laughs> yeah, that was it. impressive. Yeah. yeah. You know, hey, that's good. Good yeah, on you, fifty-year-old yeah. woman. Yeah, <laughs> I. There's a, there's a noticeable difference though. Yeah, it's funny too because. This is going to be off topic, but if you guys watch that Jay and Silent Bob trailer, the 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 one with the reboot film, yeah, oh, the two of them look. Cool. Jay Jay, particularly around the mouth area, is like, I, he just like can't hide it anymore. Yeah, like he's getting old, right? I felt it was the same way with her. Like she just getting those wrinkles that you just can't you can't make up away or anything. It's... To continue your tangent, because we can't ever help it, um, <laughs> there was an interview. I forget what the hell it was. Oh, it was um. At one of the comic conventions, um, they were talking to Kevin Smith about the uh, Masters, Masters of the Universe cartoon that he's getting ready to do, right? The one that I sent you guys a link on. And Jay was there, and he came over to talk to them. And he was wearing a t-shirt, and I am definitely not one at 44 years old to be body shaming nobody. But, woof, the dude had some man tits. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, holy shit. Ugh. All right, let, let, let's let this tangent go one more because I just can't help but mis- mention something from this weekend. So we went to the, on the topic of mantis. Yeah, so we went to the, we went to the well, Comic Con. Maybe he's on medication. It happens. That's a side effect to medication sometimes. Yeah, self medication. Okay. <laughs> I think the only medicine he's on is pot. Heroin. Yeah. Heroin. Oh, he's on heroin. Yeah, he was on heroin. Oh, that's actually yeah. not that surprising. No, not at all. But go ahead. Yeah. All right. So anyway, so, we were speaking at of people that, that don't look good anymore. Yeah, we were at yeah. the uh, uh, Comic Con in Orlando, the the Infinity Toy and Comic Con in Orlando this past weekend. Yes, and the, the small ones. The Nasty Boys were there, which was old uh, WWF uh, tag team wrestling group. Yep. Um, one of them, I mean, he's older, but he looks okay. The other one, holy shit! Yeah. Like yeah. Jerry Sags is in bad shape. Like yeah. he is like so much Hunched weight over. Yeah. Like. He's got. I think he had. Did he have a wheelchair to? Pretty much, yeah. So he didn't have yeah, to walk. He was in a wheelchair, so he didn't walk. A scooter? Yeah. Was he an electric scooter? Yeah. I'm not I, sure exactly. I don't know what, what it was, was but yeah, because he was already behind the table when we got back over there. Yeah. But yeah. And then I, I caught the end of a conversation. So um, he was talking, not him. Uh, the other one was Nobs. Nobs thanks. Was talking to uh, <laughs> the guy that played uh, Polly. <laughs> Polly and uh, and uh, Godfather. Yeah, I got a right? picture with him. We'll post it. And and so. Um, you know, the, the other guy had left and he was like, Hey, what happened? You know, like, Oh, you know, I told him to go, 
you know, go to the hospital or whatever. And then they were saying like, oh, you know, he really needs to start taking care of himself. I'm thinking, yeah, he definitely does. Yeah. I don't know what yeah. the fuck happened to him, but he definitely um, does. Hard Apparently living. Hulk Hogan wrote him off, and that was the end of that one. Hard living, yeah. Yeah, because he popped up on the, uh, like, Hogan's reality shows every once in a while. They're buds. Like, yeah, yeah, they're, like they're boys from friends. way back. Like, they live not too far from each other. Yeah. So it's, it's sad. Watch your aisles. But we did, uh, on that note, since we're still there, we did meet uh, Rocky Johnson, Dwayne Johnson's dad. Yep. He looked the best out of all of them. Yep. Yeah, that's like actually the true. He like, did, yeah. He yeah. looked like he could still kick your ass. But, uh... Yeah, when I told Noah and Mika, I was like, do you guys remember who Dwayne Johnson is? And they were both like, uh, I said, The Rock, the Rock and I showed yeah. him a picture, and they were both like, yeah. <laughs> I said, his dad is here, and they were both like, what? I was like, well, yeah, you want to meet him? Yeah. So we went, we met him, paid 20 bucks for an autograph and a picture, you know, so, hey, whatever, you know, it's cool. And his, his dad isn't nobody, for what it's worth. Uh, he, he was like a pro he, boxer. Yeah, he was a pro wrestler. Pro wrestler, wrestler yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah, he was Rocky Johnson. He was one of the wrestlers in WWF back yep. in the day. That's where Rock got his name. Anyway, yeah, so yeah, that was our uh, tangent into the Comic-Con that I guess we probably could have opened with, but uh, yeah. we fucked that away. Yeah, that's all right. So stay tuned for next year when we try to uh, <laughs> live stream this podcast from there. It's going to be great. Let's sneak it in somewhere. Um, Get ready for that call in, Ann. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, maybe I'll come and go with you. That'd be, yeah, that'd be cool. There we go. All right, so um, the next the next comic uh, show difference thing, they, they, they actually did a good job to make it still work, right? So uh, we had talked about, uh, not to tangent here, just, just to mention, sorry, but we had talked about Venom and how they destroyed it by ruining the origin story, and then, yeah. like, the character doesn't make sense anymore, right? But, so Butcher's origin story is about uh, his wife being killed because a superhero rapes her, and she ends up impregnated with her kid, and the kid is a superhero, and he basically kills her before he's before he comes out, right? Yeah. That, that's the whole thing. So that's why Butcher hates soups. That's why he wants to kill them all. That's that's his what they call the woman in the refrigerator trope, which started yeah. with, Green, with Lantern. Green Lantern. Yeah. yeah. So um, and they anyway. essentially do the same thing throughout this eight episode series. Yeah. So that's why I say they did it in a good way. So he thinks at least. That that's what happened. Yeah, that Homelander raped his wife. Yeah, he thinks that's what happened, and that's what gives him his drive. Now, of course, on the last episode, they reveal something completely different, which we can talk about later. But yeah, yeah that isn't it. But but they didn't ruin his backstory because that is truly what he's believed for the last fifteen <coughs> years or whatever the hell it's been. Well, Homelander does rape his wife. Well, yes, of course, yes. But um, but he but believes. Does he? Does does he? It does... Well, it does I guess I guess we we technically don't know that that is part of the storyline. So we know what he thinks happened. In the comics, supposedly he rapes her and then she gives birth to his kid. And that's the first soup that Butcher ever kills. And he's got the brand from the right. la laser eyes on his arm. Right. right? But here, yeah. all right, spoiler alert for later on in the series. Spoiler alert. He watches, for later. yeah, whatever. We already did spoiler alerts. Yeah, he, but, it's open, but he it's watches, open he's watching the video where after the rape, supposed rape, whatever, she goes and she's sitting on that bench for three hours and then she gets up and. Disappears. Right. And that's the last you see her. Right. You don't know what's going on. Butcher thinks she's dead, whatever. He believes Homelander raped her. But when they show, um, what's her face comes in with the other footage from the hotel. Right. Says she's in there for three hours with him. Yeah, exactly. It was the office. It was, okay, it was the, the office. office. Yeah. yeah, but. And then. Was it necessarily a rape? Because what, yeah, Homelander and then, was and, like. <laughs> but what? But what? It, it was a celebrity thing. She comes out disheveled. And not like she enjoyed it. She comes out disheveled like, oh, my God, I just got assaulted. Clothes askew, yeah, trying I mean, to get I, out of there. Like, I'm guilty. Yeah. I'm guilty. Yeah. I'm guilty. I could go either way. Yeah. And the other, and I think the other part of that is it's not like she reached out to Butcher at some point along the way. She let him think she was dead. Yeah. Exactly. She stayed away from him. She didn't tell him shit. So... But we don't know why. No, we don't. We don't. Or because of something that Bot did. But what we do know is that at the very last episode, Homelander is going to take him there yeah. and show him. And that says to me that he was, you know, that she was knowingly part of this That blew charade. my freaking mind. Because I, <laughs> I honestly didn't. I was like, how the hell are they going to come back for season two? All right. So, the, well, all right. Let's save the showdown between Homelander and Butcher. <laughs> We're all over the place. As always. Yeah. No, that's all right. We're all right. Can I tell you my favorite line, though, that has to do with Butcher when he first meets Huey? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> he says, you're like the porn version of the Matrix. 
perfect. Yeah. That was perfect. Uh, uh, Sorry, I didn't do no, that. No, no that's it's right. fine. Uh, no, because I was just thinking my favorite well, line of the whole series was um, uh, the deep driving. Okay, fine. If I touch it, will you be quiet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's only the best part because of everything that ensues after, yeah. though, I think. Um, all right. So I think in the comics, they're, they're, uh, the boys are part of some – like clandestine cia group or something right yes. and they're yeah. clearly not that in the show right yeah he feigns well, no, he, he feigns yeah he feigns being part of the government and then he he very quickly reveals to huey yeah okay maybe not right and but that's, i think he used to be didn't he Isn't oh maybe he used to be and in fact yeah, cause when they first yeah, because him, when they mallory do comes to get yeah. him yes mallory so mallory is a relationship that exists in the comic um that that's made a big deal out Again, of Again, gender swap because in the yeah. comic it sounds yeah. like they, they say mallory's a he it's greg mallory in the comics so we're gonna see it seems like they're gonna introduce that now so maybe they'll give some sort of backstory where he was cia and he was too rogue or something and they Paul's going to check. combat uh, yeah who knows um <laughs> Something happened to Mallory's family, which they all fell apart. They, right. they, yeah, all right. So for the show, it's a female. They kill her grandkids. Same thing happens in the comics. Yeah. Okay. They go against the soups. The soups kill his grandkids. And and it's the same thing where, like, um, M.M. is pissed off. He's like, you know, remember what happened with Mallory? Right. Same thing. I really like that dude. What's his name? Uh, Jazz. I can't pronounce Laz. His name. Laz. Laz. Yeah, Laz um, Alonzo. Yeah, Laz Alonzo. I really like his portrayal. He's good in this show. Yeah, I mean they were all good, but like he's like he hit home with me. I was like, he was really good with the show. Like just he's loyal to them, but he's like, dude, you know, yeah. come on, I kept, do this right I way. Thinking, I kept thinking that Mother Smoke was somehow, or Butcher was somehow going to be like a former soup that like just like let things go <laughs> because of how things turned out, especially with a character's name like Mother Smoke. Right. Like who, yeah. You, why is his name Mother's Mouth? And I thought, oh, he's one of these two hundred plus soups that are just out there, and he's not in. Yeah. Like you know, in in the and comic, I, he is like massive too, like way yeah, yeah. bigger than the others, like yeah. huge. Yeah. yeah, he's tremendous. Go ahead. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just he does look a little bit superheroish in the comic, even though yeah, he's I not. Yeah, I thought that's like maybe there was some origin with him because you see all these disenfranchised. Like Eric, you and I kind of briefly talked about Mesmer about. Like, he's a disenfranchised dude, mm-hmm. right? So I kind of thought, like, I keep thinking, like, something's going to happen where we're going to find out either Butcher or Mother's Milk was, like, as a disenfranchised soup of some sort. But that that's not how it turned out. That right. was kind of what my thought process was going with it. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, see, now she's mentioned Mesmer. I mean, I can jump into the cameos in this Well, so game. listen, I, I I just have, yeah, I want to do I know, you, I you do typed out this. No, 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 I, I just have one more, and we're done. And we've already mentioned all the others. And and the only other big difference I saw was that in the comic, they are in, a like, a, a floating sky base nonsense. And in this, they switched it to be a tower. League. Yeah. Avengers Tower. Yeah. And now they made it more Avengers like Avengers tower. tower. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so even though it's a corporate Vought. Avengers Tower, but yeah. Why did they make it that way? Maybe because the MCU is making more money than DCEU? Ooh. Well, I think it yeah. seemed like anything that was in the comic that was a little bit unrealistic, they just chopped out. They and they tried to bring it back to yeah. like, uh, what can people really connect to? Because it isn't going to be Jack from Jupiter, and it isn't going to be a floating sky base. That's for It's the not going to be the <laughs> z- zombie-ish heroes coming back. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and what happens is uh, the, um, the guy Blarney Cock and... Um, the lamp lighter from the original seven at some point in the comics, they show that these guys died, but then the compound V in their system reanimates them, but they're like brainless. They're like, they barely go through the motions of being a person. So they deal with that too. Like there's like these people out there that are like almost zombies going around, just kind of being all fucked up. And it's kind of, it's kind of funny. They haven't touched on that at all, so I'm hoping they do. It would be kind of pretty cool. Well, and because I'm now your show's new LCD, John, you can take a break. <laughs> I can take a break? All right. <laughs> Hang on. Uh, we haven't gotten into the movie Zombie Tata Wave yet. Stand by. Well, I can read the comics, you know, that this is based on. And, I, and you know, I don't know, like, where they're going with all this, but, like, this whole the whole storyline and the fact that this is a corporation running them and they're superheroes like the sky base makes sense like that that should be there because they're they're freaking soups right right why are they going to cow town to a corporation when they can do whatever the hell they want 
That yeah. part of it didn't make any sense to me, but that's where they deviated from the comic is what you guys are saying, which that, so the comic makes a little bit more sense to me that they would have like some sky. Yeah. You know, the, they don't, yeah. Devi- they don't deviate in that particular regard though. The soups the are comic still actually touches on that though. Why are they, why are they bowing down to Vaught American is Vaught American in the comic? And there's a whole reason for that is how they incorporate how they they're the ones that control their reputations and they're just infatuated with being these, these celebrities. So is Vaught le- the name in the comic book? It's, it's Vaught, Vaught, Vaught American. American. Yeah. Vaught hyphen okay. American. Yeah, is it what started it out as Vaught and then they they changed it to Vaught American throughout the comic. Well, I made the comparison to Vaught, which is what I think the whole thing. Yeah, is. I th- yeah, I think yeah. the the wordplay there is probably is probably what it was intended to be. Yeah. 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 Well, and if you think about, you think about sort of traditional comic books in a way, you're like, well, how do you guys get paid? Like, Superman, his his alias is a reporter that clearly doesn't make much money. So why is Superman? Would you would you live not the way Bruce Wayne lives? Like, yeah. Like, and mm-hmm. and so in this, it's it's because you get paid by Vaught, and and based on where right. you are, you get a salary. Yeah. And, and so they, you, they like their status, right? And and so but there's there's the they, scene with. I'm sorry, Paul. They could they could just go and take whatever they want. They're suits. Yeah, but they but they don't. Like, yeah, so in traditional comic books, they like right. Superman is never just going to go take money. Um, but, so he would but, need this sort of corporate backing. Yeah, you, you, you can't be virtuous and go rob a bank. I mean, that's not really right, possible. But these, but these guys are not. None of these people are virtuous. Well, they, they are in the public light, though. Correct. They are in the public yeah. light, and they, and they want to keep it that way, and that's part of the theming. And I think even if they were, if one were to go rogue, they'd get their ass whooped by the other six, or or, or however many it turned yeah. out to be. Yeah. I, but and again, you just go back to look at celebrities. Look, look at the YouTube generation. All these idiots will do anything for attention. Right. That's what these guys are doing. So they get in bed with Vaught because they're going to get paid and taken care of, and they'll have the spin because that's what Vaught does. Is they spin yeah. everything that's yeah. bad. And they're all worried about their shares and their yep. numbers yep. and all of that. Yeah. Which is hilarious. I love that. Yeah, I think that's money too. So. I'm not sure if this existed in the comic, but there were definitely like just for the boys specifically, there were like these humanizing elements they threw in there. Like like Huey is 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 sort of anxious and weird in both. It, that doesn't really differ, right. and that makes him human. But for like mother's milk, like the thing where he's like constantly calling his wife or whatever, like oh yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get you lobster. Do they do that in the comic? I don't feel like no, they do that. No, in the comic. no, but there is something with his mother that I have not gotten up to yet. I've got where he goes to visit his mother, and they don't show the actual interaction with her, but it looks like he's going down into a basement, so I don't know. They're hiding that right now, so when I get to it, I'll kind of I'll bring it out. Well, but so something there always enrages him, so I don't know if she's Either way, like, it's, not, it's not in the forefront. It's not, it's, it's not blatant, like... I mean, essentially, he's like pussy whipped by his. That makes him very human, like yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. It makes him very relatable, though. Like, no, really, he's frothy mother's milk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <exactly>. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds about right. Oh, and I'm then, and then, that one. And then they definitely changed Frenchy from from the comic to make him like much more relatable, and he's sort of like a little bit nurturing, especially yeah. with Huey and. And the girl. With the and, the girl yeah. and the girl. And the girl, yep. And the female. Because he's not that way. Well, all right, you don't see it in the comic because they're already, but they're always no, together. I, I am yeah. pretty sure he is crazy in the comic. Like, oh, he is. Like, he is legit crazy. insane. Yeah, there's that one scene where he, like, sniffs his way over to the car in the <laughs> yeah. comic yeah. and then kills the two gar- guys in the car. Yeah, and, like, you don't even see it happen. You just see the blood splatter. But, like, Mother's yeah. doing like that? No, Frenchie. Oh, Frenchie. Oh, Frenchie. Yeah, he's like crawling along the sidewalk on all fours, like sniffing like a bloodhound. Yeah, that's what uh, – Frenchie is awesome in the comic because he's way over the edge and weird and does bizarre things. But in the show, he's awesome because they made him more human. They made him more relatable and they made him sort of like – he's a crazy killer, but he's also like nurturing for people that he respects mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah, and I'm hoping because uh, now he's also like the, the big chemist and everything in there. I'm hoping that – in season two, he's the reason they wind up with co- like their own version of Compound V that will make them put them on par with them. And I think that's good. You're going to see it. And I, they have to do it in season two. 
where you put them on par with them so you can show them fighting each other. Because you're going to start to introduce these other factions. You you have to. I don't know if it holds true in the comic book, but what I what I see Huey is is the only one with a conscience. Like he's the conscience of. He's supposed to be like the one with a conscience. Oh, of the of the, of the boys. boys. Yeah. Yeah. The boys. yeah. Yeah. That's that's true. I think that's true in the comic. Yeah, and that's cool. And now, okay, so yeah, now we'll go back to the conscience thing because we'll talk about the deep. Yeah. <laughs> you ready, Ann? You ready to school these guys? I'm sorry, am I doing that to you? No. So much. Okay. So, like, you know, Eric, you said you thought he was the worst one out of them. But when we were watching it, Heather mentioned something while, while we were watching. She said, it doesn't seem like all of them. And then she specifically mentioned the deep. Like, while Homelander is, like, all about himself and everything else, and you're all here to help me do this, whatever. She said, when she watched the deep, it seemed to her like, while he will do all this bad shit, he does have some... He's got a, a goal in mind as far as, like, like he cares about the sea life and whatever, you know. He's trying to protect them. He's trying to help them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he cares about the dolphin. That didn't go well. But she said, like, it looks like every time he, he looks like he's going to try to do something good, it fucks up on him. Yeah. You know, and, and she, she was right there. But I think, yeah, because she just said, like, look at his face in some of those scenes where it looks like he's just dejected from not being able to do something good. Yeah, so like he maybe he does have a conscience that's not like he seems like the no, the, the, <coughs> but I think he's gonna he, come back. He feels like the doofus to me. Yeah, he is, to, to me though, that just plays out as narcissism on his part that he's just upset that it didn't work out positively for him. Like not that he cares about doing something good. Yeah, he well, wants more maybe, notoriety. Maybe they did his character a disservice when he was the only one with uh, you know stuff in Starlight's face because it makes him look like he's the instigator when in the comic book he was just tagging along, which is what he's always doing. Yeah, well, yeah. in the comic, he wasn't even involved in that part of it. Right. No, he wasn't. He, 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 oh, I thought he was one of the three. No, no, no. he wasn't. He wasn't. It was, it was, it was A-Train, Noir, Homelander, and, and Black Noir. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Two black dudes, of course, because it had to be extra, extra in your face. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, he wasn't involved at all. In fact, through, A-Train's not black in the through, through at least the first part of the comic, he's barely involved in anything. He's like the outsider; like he's v- rarely he needed because right of right his abilities. Yeah. When he, he does, sh- has, when he does he show up, he doesn't take his mask off. He's got the helmet or whatever on the whole time. He doesn't talk. Yeah, you never see. Yeah. You barely ever see him in the comics. I, in the board, he's definitely the low IQ guy. Like he's he, he's basically there. Yeah. 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 And, and all right, so let's get into his his crowning achievement of this series. Oh God, what is this? So oh, when oh, he goes uh, episode four, right, episode so, four, yeah, episode four, when he decides he's going to nobody's go, nobody's listening to him, where he wants to help the aquatic life that's in <laughs> essentially their sea world, right? Right. So he goes and he makes a valiant effort to break out one dolphin who says she's underfed. <laughs> And he's, <laughs> you see a van smash through the gates of this place, and then it zooms into him driving, and this dolphin in a harness behind him in the van, and the dolphin's just behind him chattering away, and he's it's talking to her. Thing. Yeah, and and he's talking to her, so you get the uh, inference of what's being said to him, and they're talking, and he's like, yeah, I know, I know, I care about you too, and when this whole this is a very awkward conversation that you're part you're a part of now. Uh, between him and this damn dolphin. I, lo- I love how they do this, too, because your jaw starts to drop at that moment. Yeah, like, when they're... Wait. When the dolphin's He's like, like... Well, now you know, you're making it awkward. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then, then when the dolphin chatters at him again and he says, well, fine, if I just touch it, will you... Because he's like, first he's like... Not now. Let's just get yeah. going. And then finally he's like, fine, if I just touch it, will you just be quiet? And you're just sitting there staring at the screen like, holy shit. He's about to go on the blowhole. Yeah. yeah. That dolphin could deliver its lines, too, let me tell you. It was yeah. perfect. perfect. Yeah. Not only can that dolphin deliver his lines, but that yeah. longing look. <laughs> yeah. When, all right, so they, so they get in an accident, and the dolphin goes flying out of the fucking harness, and it goes into slow motion. Yeah, and he's, like, looking at him. He looks at the dolphin, and the dolphin's eye never leaves. Yep. It follows him as, he, as he heads towards the windshield. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna choke to death. Oh my god! Dolphin yeah. goes flying through the fucking windshield, and you're like, now you're sitting there going, 
there is no way they just did that. Yeah. And as soon as you think there's no way they just did that, <laughs> yeah. this fucking truck runs over the goddamn dog. <laughs> oh, and it like. It, Again, it like eviscerates the thing. Yeah. It is just like And you hear the squish <laughs> yeah. and and you see it pop and this is the first time in a long time I was on the couch. I, I don't think anyone was home as I was watching it. I was and I was in tears. I was laughing yet going like, Holy shit, I can't believe they just did that. Yeah. I was just like, No yeah. And then I just that. broke out into laughter. Oh, I was can I just ask, could he not have led them out to sea? Yeah, I I don't know. <laughs> It, it, it would have not made for as great of a scene, yeah. though. So I'm happy they did it that way. Yeah. <laughs> and then the next time you see him is the, when the news camera is right, and he's just sitting there on the pavement. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, like he's going to piece it back together or something. He's like, he doesn't know what to do. <clears throat> oh, God. oh, my God. That was so fucking amazing. So... Yeah, that is one of many, many shock moments. I, I, I need to uh, emphasis, put emphasis on the fact that I do love dolphins. Um, <laughs> <laughs> holy shit. Um, sorry, but that was funny. Yeah. Uh, okay, uh, good. It was. Yeah. And so, we, so, we are for the, uh, uh, PETA. Well, actually, no, PETA, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> People eating tasty animals? That's which, right. Which PETA are you part of? <laughs> Oh my god! So I think I think talk about scenes like okay, can we talk about the Make a Wish scene? Oh, with A Train! Oh, yeah. oh holy yeah. shit! How oh awkward was that? <laughs> hey, are you gonna beat this? And the doctor's like, nope. <laughs> In a month or so, I can come back. I can teach you. I can teach you to run. I can you teach to me to outrun cancer? <laughs> holy <laughs> shit! Yeah. <laughs> hey, he's like A Train. Yeah. <laughs> It was so awkward and just horrible. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it was apparently live because they they flash back to Stillwell watching it in the office, and she's like, yeah. "Just turn it off." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. that was amazing. Oh, oh goodness. All right, so so every episode has at least one, if not two, maybe even three, like shock moments in it. So we talked about the A train exploding old dude's girlfriend, but I think that was might be it was episode two. But um, Huey gets introduced into the sort of soup secret lair, yeah, like the that bar, weird that club bar, yeah. thing. Oh God, where, oh and when you when you when you first see that part, you probably don't think too much of it. But then all of a sudden, there's like a little I don't know rhino looking guy, and he's tiny as hell. Like and, the at, like the Adam. Yeah, Adam. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. he's he's like running across the table and then jumping into a woman's vagina or something. I'm not even sure what the yeah. fuck was happening there. And then and then no, um, it's not possible. It's not possible. <laughs> Ant-Man. And then they go to, uh, what's his name? Ezra? Uh, Ezekiel. Ezekiel, sorry. Ezekiel, and um, he's, of course, this super Christian dude, which is another theme of the show that's really kind of interesting. But um, he, but he's in this lair having, yeah, yeah, time we, out. We, we need to time John's out back, out. To the, uh, back to the Ant-Man thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Because right as that little dude goes, oh, and I'm sorry, Marvel, don't sue me. I just keep calling him Ant-Man. But as soon as he goes... Makes the dive. You hear that little bloop. Oh, that, that, yeah. There's that yeah. S- squishy <laughs> yep. wet flesh noise. Yeah. Oh, could say something, but it's bad. <coughs> oh, oh really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> After what John did. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, please. Apparently, it was ready. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> You can cut that out. We don't cut anything out. We just put the explicit label on it. Right. Yeah, just l- listen to our uh, previous episode <laughs> when Paul dropped Florida Man castrating himself. Right. And mm. The whole show went to hell. So, so, um, <laughs> so Ezekiel's doing this weird stretch Armstrong fingering buttholes things with two guys. And again, oh, they're, they're, yeah. just, they're just setting the stage for how bizarre and fucked up things could be in the super world superhero world okay, yeah, well because no because he's getting some from a girl she's going down on him and then he stretches over her or across the the floor and then up under a table to those two guys it was a group hug yeah, yeah. It oh a, it was a group was hug that, is yeah. that what they would call him yeah. Yeah. so hey for what it's worth i don't know if i should say this i can cut this out if you want Anne, but she used to work for a proctologist so if anybody knows what a group hug oh, looks sorry. like. <laughs> Inaccurate. <laughs> All right, go ahead. I'm sorry. 
What was the name of that nightclub? Um, I think it's just <laughs> the called brown the, eye. It's called the Secret Lair or something. <laughs> that, I don't actually it. know the name of it. I don't yeah, remember. I, don't remember. I, don't, I, I put it on the sheet I, as Secret Lair, but I, I actually don't know what it was called. I thought they had mentioned the name of it, or it was outside the club or something. I couldn't remember what it was. I don't. I don't either. I have no idea. <laughs> the womb. <laughs> Probably. Obviously, we we only had so much stuff we could commit to memory, and that was not one of those things. <laughs> It's replaced by the scene of the dolphin through the windshield. <laughs> yeah, Imme- immediately. Oh my god! <laughs> that poor dolphin. All right, so um, we, we talked about Starlight um, Translucent's death. So he has the diamond skin, of course. They try a few times to kill him. They have no success. Electrocution and and trying to shoot him. And uh, uh, Butcher grabs that fucking huge 50 cal yep. rifle or whatever the hell it was. Shoots and, him and nothing happens. And then they eventually decide the best way to do Well, really, Huey. I think Huey comes up with the idea, doesn't it? No. No. no uh, Frenchie's watching, Frenchie's watching TV the, uh, and there's yeah. a show of a turtle. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's, right, that's, that's right. That's right. That's yeah. right. got yeah. a hard shell on a soft inside. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You're right. So, 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 here's so my, okay. basically they decide to stick C4 up his ass, though. That's where this goes. So here's my question. If his, if his skin's diamond hard, why would his skin explode? Like, why wouldn't it hold it in? Like the way that it wouldn't explode the turtle shell. Like it, I get it would liquefy his insides, but why would his skin? Why wouldn't his skin hold it all together? Do you think Bill Nye would guest star with us here? Remember, the skin is what they buried in the uh, chest. The skin was all they had left of them. Yeah, there was some intestines and shit in there. No, there was was goopy stuff, and they but you couldn't couldn't see because it was invisible. It was just sloppy. Yeah, gloop. Well, they said they couldn't. Some blood on it. They weren't. They wouldn't be able to burn his skin. Why? Why did his body break apart like that? Maybe like, from, I get it should have from the inside it should have, out. It should have ruptured as, every organ and like leaked out his butt or something, right? Maybe it's not part, as like, invulnerable oh, from the inside out. That would have, maybe that would have blown a big enough hole to like let everything inside <laughs> use out. <laughs> it's also not as as exciting as a TV think, shot when it yeah, I think flies mo- all in human space. Mostly it's sure. for yeah, mostly it's for the visual effect. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's and, and it's not just the visual effect; it's also a character moment. For he, Huey. Yeah, for right. Huey's the one, like, yeah. you know. When they're it, down the it, walls. Yeah, in any other circumstance, normal Huey would have let somebody go, obviously. He wouldn't yep. have done this. And, he, and you can tell without him saying anything that he has that moment when Translucent's about to escape. And then he's like, fuck it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I got to. Yeah. And he hits the fucking button. Yeah, but Translucent talks some smack, and that pushed him over the edge. Yeah. Yeah, but he still he still has no idea. Just just talking about the explosion, he has no idea what's about to happen when he hits that button. Yeah, and then it happens, and it's like extra gore. Yep. Like, oh fucking Christ! Yeah. I didn't see that coming. You know? Yeah, <clears throat> I think it was good for the visuals. I don't really care if his skin's diamond and it shouldn't break apart. I like. Yeah, it. it's one of those. <laughs> I'll just you know I'll let it go. But it's a good point. Yeah, Huey had to have that moment though. He had to have that moment where he was responsible for something that, you know, because it's going to change him or, or keep him in, whichever way he goes. Right. Right. Uh, it's hey. sort of crossing a line for Huey that, that he can't come back from. Exactly. All right. So Noah is here to say goodnight. Come here. Say goodnight. Look, Eric's aunt is on the phone and everybody else is <laughs> listening. So say, say, say hi to Ann. Hi. Hi, Noah. Right, and now you're going to say goodnight? <laughs> Good night. All right. Good night, Noah. Cool. So, brush your teeth. What'd you say? Brush your teeth. Yeah, that's right. I love you. That's our weekly good night from Noah. That's right. (laughs) Um, Uh, We lost Eric. He had to go potty. Yeah. So, I I think one of the next talking about translucent death. It's it's one of those. We just said it's a it's a line Huey crosses. And then it, it brings out that part of mother's milk that's a little bit more nurturing where he's like, you know, look, now, now you're in, in payment stuff that you never imagined and, and it's going to be different than you think it is and change you and, and that whole thing. Yeah. Um, and then you get the, I think in the shock moments, um, I don't know if it's next, if this is in logistical order, but it's um, when Pop Claw gets on the, on the compound V oh, God. and then has her way with the, the landlord and the crushes, landlord his, crushes head. his head. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was amazing. That well, was the rent, funny. Yeah. So. <laughs> and then I, this one, 
this this next one that Eric has on the list, this one really I, I thought was one of the most shocking of the whole thing, is the the terrorists on the plane. Oh and, my god! Yeah. It played out really close to the comics. And, and Homelander comes and Maeve is up there, and they decide to leave. <laughs> Eric's breaking my garage. Holy shit! Because <laughs> yeah. Because they realized that they, um, we're doing this one, that they they aren't going to be able to save this plane. Yeah, this and, plane and it comes down plane. similar to the comics, but in the comics, it's all of them go after the plane to make this big show for the seven. Yeah, and it, but again, it becomes a complete clusterfuck. Yeah, a lot funnier in the comic actually. So, we just did it. Yeah, well, I have a couple questions that maybe. You guys can pan out from the comic or whatever, but maybe it's just a TV show thing. But every time Holander does stuff like that, and he did it several times in several different episodes, mm-hmm. like he doesn't seem to have control of his eye beams very well right. because like he ripped <laughs> through the the cockpit controls, which is part of what screwed them up. Yep. And yeah. then later later on, he like rips through something else. Like he just keeps going or whatever. But in the pivotal scene with Stillwell, like nothing else happens. Well, so it, it, it's definitely for effect because yeah, because you want to so see her burnt out. Skull when he at the end when, of it. when he is outside the plane and uses his laser eyes for for the second episode scene or whatever it was with the with the Boston uh, mayor. Baltimore, yeah. Baltimore, sorry, yeah. Baltimore mayor. So he clearly just cuts right through the whole plane, no problem, done. Hijacking <laughs> scene, he goes through the hijacker, only into the control panel, doesn't cut through the plane. So there's yeah. time to do this. And then the last time he really uses it on somebody, he pops a head and does no damage to anything else at all. Yeah. I mean, they're clearly, like, not not playing by their own rules with the Well, I mean, even works. within... I mean, even within comics for Superman, though, he depending on how intense he uses his heat vision, right? But I don't think Homelander has anywhere near the control over it as Superman does his heat vision. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I didn't think he cared. No, I, I oh, think, no, yeah, no. And it I think you're right. He doesn't care. And I like, think he you're right. He does rage, not care. He lets yeah. his rage take over, yeah. and he just goes... I think, just but like, to Eric's point, that last shot of him going after Stillwell, that's for effect. You need to be able to see her burnt out husk of a skull yeah. at the end. And, and they don't go into a reason why until it's either episode seven or eight when they explain that because they raised him in a lab without parents, he turns he out extra violent. Yeah. He, he's extra violent. And that's yeah. why the rest of them were put with families and yeah. and raised to be better people. And, and you see it play out. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, okay, all of that makes sense now. All right, so I think that brings us to like the very last part of it. <laughs> so the spoiler, the spoilers, is that it? Where are we at? Oh wait, no. Um, what else you want I to think, cover? Did we do? Did you guys talk about Black Noir versus the female? So that wasn't like a shocker moment, but it's actually that the was really cool. Only yeah. superhero fight in right. the whole first season. It was season. really cool. It shows you how badass the female really is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, granted, you see it briefly here and there, but you actually see. She reminded me of uh, Daphne Keene in uh, Logan. Yeah, who plays X-23? Yeah. 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 She did use a tire iron. Tire iron? Well, yeah. True. Oh, yo, on A-Train. On A-Train. Oh, my God, that was amazing. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I had that on the list of things, too. I mean, when, when she hits him in the leg, like, yeah. fuck. And you see his bone, the <laughs> yeah, bone, the pop bone is yeah. popping through, yeah. and it's like, that was a shock moment just because of how they did it. Not because yeah. she broke his leg, but it was like... Him on the ground writhing with the fucking bones yep. sticking out. And it's yeah. like, oh, shit. Well, I just love how yeah. A-Train runs all over the place first. We're, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Go back to Noir. Sorry. No, no, it's all right. <laughs> I just said uh, that was the one superhero fight. They did it really well. It actually it was a little bit, for me, reminiscent of Ronin. <laughs> the Ronin fight in, yeah. uh, in, uh, uh, in Endgame. Endgame. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was. And the fact that you know Black Noir takes her out, and then you realize that, oh, she can heal like from almost anything yep. like she was dead and she could heal yeah so a la a wolverine kind of x-23 yeah so she's definitely going to be that like that badass unstoppable kid that's just going to keep yeah. coming but she also sacrificed herself for frenchie which was telling yeah, yeah. she did yeah mm-hmm. yep and that's their relationship is important in the comic i imagine it'll be important in the show yeah it looks like it's growing quick but uh yeah so then her against a train that whole thing where a train runs around the house mm-hmm. and he's like 
man, who are you, dumbass? You came by yourself, whatever. You really didn't bring and anybody. Whole, yeah. yeah, and then that whole time while he's talking, you watch that the attic yep. thing, the vent come down. I was like, holy shit! And right away, <laughs> I'm like, there's only one person that could possibly be. Yep. All right, that's that stealthy. And she comes out of nowhere. But you don't even see her drop. Nope. Do you see? You just see the thing open, and then it cuts to Huey. Yeah. And then it comes back to A Train, and then all of a sudden, whack! Yep. Oh yeah. my god. And she had to do that. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know? And it's also, I think, it was also symbolic because, like, you know, like I don't know what the whole thing is with him and his brother. I don't know if it's the same in the comic strip or if the brother's even in the comic strip. But nope. Uh, or the comic. I'm sorry. I'm saying comic strip. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay um, but like you know she had to like she had to basically do something to capacitate him and that was the only thing to keep him from shifting out again yeah yeah yep she's widely that one well uh, yeah she is. yeah she is i actually like uh how she's portrayed in this show i, I really I do, do. And yeah. i like how it's like, sort of like silent uh that episode or that like i guess the those couple of episodes are where you actually see her make her choice to become a part of the team yeah and it's really cool and she does it with, with saying basically nothing uh, mm-hmm. everything yeah. is like without her speaking a word but it's mm-hmm. very obvious what they're trying to portray and what she's doing yeah. Now, so far in the comic that I'm up to, they don't reveal her name at all. So, I was kind of disappointed that they did that so soon in the show. But I mean, whatever. And they revealed her name, so I yeah. so I can live with it. You know, so that, that that probably goes back to they've tried to take away some of the, um, <coughs> I guess, chauvinistic elements of the comic with yeah, this. Yeah, and, and like st- Starlight, <laughs> Starlight gets her her herself back real fast in this which we yeah. already talked about the female is not the female she has a name already yeah. and, you know and she's just the female in the comic in the for comic. the longest time yeah <clears throat> which they don't do um there's something that happens with the deep that we're going to talk about next which is is also <laughs> a redeeming moment for any but, but, but there's this whole woman empowerment thing they've done but they haven't done it in an ugly way we've talked about which we've in talked other yeah, movies I've, I've like, complained about you can it do many this times. in a blatant obvious way where it feels like you're just forcing it on somebody yeah. but the way and, that they do okay it it's with it here really good yeah it's really good and it works yeah. and so i guess i guess while we're on the topic we might as well just bring it up so um <laughs> And mentioned this to me. It wasn't originally on my list of moments, but um, there's a there's an episode. It's towards the end, I think. Um, the deep is off in Ohio or wherever the hell he gets assigned, where he has no work to do. Yeah. And um, you know, he eventually goes out and starts meeting women for for you know anonymous sex or whatever. Well, it's not anonymous for him, but you know what I mean. So, but he meets this one woman who has some sort of weird fetish with his gills, which of yeah. course at that point you don't know he has right. gills. He's there behind the suit, and she's trying to convince him to take it off, and he does it. And then she's essentially like, I, I don't know, fingering his gills, and, yeah. and it's painful for like him. Like roughly, yeah. Yeah, it's painful for him, and he's like, stop it. And there's this sort of moment where they take away all his manhood, yeah. and, and he's sort of like, you know, stop, stop, oh, stop, oh, stop, fine, whatever. Right. You know, and he's just like, and you know, he's a superhero. It's, it's not like he's he's really going to get hurt by it or something, but I think there's this whole thing where they've sort of like flipped the roles there, and now he sexually assaulted someone at the beginning. Right, so he And gets now assault, he's getting it back. Essentially, yeah. And I think it's two-part in that he's getting it back, and that's karma, but it's also like this humiliating moment for him mm-hmm. where he's just like, you know, he, he could have thrown her through a wall if he wanted to, you know, but right. he doesn't, and he's just like, oh, fine, fuck it. You know, no, it's like, gonna like at the beginning, abuse. Starlight could have thrown him through a wall. Yeah. Yeah, well, she should have. I, I, I don't want to say that, but. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, how can you? Uh, so, uh, but there's this whole thing, like when he's pumping gas and somebody throws a rock through yeah. his window, and he just says, yeah, keep keep telling your truth. Like, you know, he's tr- he's trying to give something back because he knew that he shouldn't have done that or it was made public and he's trying to make his image better or whatever. But it, it was like, I felt like it was in the same arc. Like, you know, yeah, Hey, yeah. The, the women are like not liking you and this and that, but you're a, yeah, you're an, an, you've been identified as a scumbag and a, and a sexual assaulter. And yeah. yeah. What's, yeah, well, what do you it was what retribution scene, but it was messed up. You know what I mean? What do you all think is the, what do you all think is the deal with the scene where he shaves his body and ends up shaving his head? 
Like, is that his sort of Britney Spears crazy moment? Yeah, I think yes. so. Yeah, I think, it, that's I think his... like he already felt a lot of humiliation and like let's just go all the way. So like where they they threw things in to humanize the boys, I think for the deep specifically, they put things in to like totally dehumanize him because he he is the sole initiator of that thing in the beginning. He's the one that gets punished and gets put off to the side. He's the one that sort of has this a Britney Spears moment, I guess you could call it. But and then he's the one that gets assaulted by somebody yeah. In, in, yeah. in a hotel where nobody will ever know, and he just has the to deal with it. The world's weirdest, yeah, first time <laughs> anal scene. Yeah. <laughs> just Interesting a pinky. way to put just it. Gil- yeah. He got gilled, yeah. Oh. So uh, Ann and I like to play. Uh, Ann and I like to play word games. Um, we're always doing like alliteration and. Weird I was stuff. hoping you were going to keep on going with the <laughs> phrase and not pause anymore because that was really awkward after I said anal. <laughs> uh, I was just trying to figure out wh- what is it called. What is it called when uh, somebody has some sort of weird fish sexual obsession? So if you are scared of fish, it's called ichthophobia, okay. right? That's from the Greek, right? So if you are fetish. fetishized with the fish stuff. Is it ichthophilia? Is that the word you use? Is that the right to... Sure. And Paul, the uh, the king of all research, right. is going to check it out. God, I, you know... Did you, 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 you know the you answer were... to this, Anne? Because you didn't, you didn't say anything when I put it down there. Ichthyophilia. <laughs> no, I don't. I do want you to know, Anne, that Eric and I are solely responsible for wiping all of Paul's Google history... <laughs> Should he have a heart attack? I, I didn't really. I did this before I thought about it, but I just googled fish fetish, and this is going to destroy my Google. This is going to destroy my Google setting. <laughs> okay, list of paraphilias on Wikipedia. This is just going to. Oh god. Paraphilias are sexual interests in objects, situations, or individuals that are atypical. This is a whole separate show, but go ahead. Paraphilias. All right, let's see. So then that does make sense. So so ichthyophilia yeah. would make sense. That would be a sexual fetish with fish things. Sure. That is really bizarre. <laughs> Gilophilia. <laughs> Guppyophilia. Uh, fishophilia just seems like on the nose. <laughs> it's gotta have, it's gonna Greek, have some it's weird. It's gotta have name. Greek or Latin yeah. roots or it just doesn't yeah. it doesn't doesn't work. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> All right, so we'll we'll just call it that for now. Um, yeah, why don't we? Because when we're at the point where we're talking about fish fetishes, I, we've hit the end of the show. <laughs> All right, well, so we have one thing. What we've, the hell has happened to this podcast? <laughs> we've already talked about we've, castration and fish fetishes. You got you guys. I, there's a alphabetic. Oh, there's an alphabetized list of of <laughs> paraphilias that are messed up, and I'm. I feel terrible. I'm going to have to go home and take a shower after having oh, read most of this. You're going list. to end up on an FBI watch list. For no, sure. Screw Make it that. Home. We're doing a show on them. <sighs> oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> Eproctophilia is your focus of erotic interest is flatulence. Emetophilia, your focus of erotic interest is vomit. Well, that's weird. You would like that's rub it on rough. yourself? Or? Formicophilia, <laughs> being crawled on by insects. Ooh. That's a fetish, though? Fornophilia is termi- turning a human being into a piece of furniture. Wait, wait, hold on. Hold on. Can I stop wait, you there? What? Do you guys remember this show, um, Fear Factor? Yeah. yeah. One, of the, yeah. one of the stunts they would do it, sometimes. You couldn't yep. believe he got people to do the shit they yep. did. Yeah. One of the, one of the, one of the uh, things they would do every once in a while is they'd put somebody in a clear glass box and they'd fill it with, like, spiders or cockroaches yeah. or something. Yeah. And you're telling me that there's, I'm a, brave dude. there's a one die. in a million or something that gets a hard on. When yeah. they get put in that position. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a thing. That person should have been on that show. Yeah. They, yeah. Uh, for a million dollars? Fuck, I'll do it for a dollar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll pay you. I get paid to do this? Oh, yeah. my God. Hey, no, yeah, that was a Joe Rogan had a whole skit on it. He was like, I, he was like, they signed us up for multiple seasons. I couldn't believe they actually had it. Like, really? These people are coming back? <laughs> he was like, you're going to get paid to do what? You have to drink what? Yeah. Oh. Uh, Eating bulls balls and drinking semen. And... Oh yeah, I remember that. I remember that episode. <laughs> there were cooked bulls balls though. I think I would eat those cooked bulls balls. I could do that. That wouldn't be that hard. Drinking the semen though, no fucking way. Hey, Paul. We're learning a lot. Paul, I hope you weren't flying anytime soon. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to destroy my phone on the way home. Honey, I lost my phone. You're on that watch list. <laughs> TSA is gonna be like, uh, Mr. Seagull, we gotta talk to you. Yeah, <laughs> there's gonna be an FBI agent at my door when I get home. All right, so um, the last thing, we, we, we briefly skimmed over this, but if anybody wants to talk about it... <laughs> Putting on gloves going, you're going to like this. 
According to your Google search, <laughs> the cliffhanger, the cliffhanger ending of this show. So, uh, yeah, let's tear it apart so we get into this. So episode. this both this both kills the woman in the refrigerator thing for Butcher because it's only what he believed. It's now not the truth, and will he still be hating soups? Of course, you couldn't you couldn't have the right, show so, without it. But I right, should do the setup. All right, so uh, yeah, you do the Butcher's setup. Butcher's going after Homelander because you know Homelander raped his wife, and now she she's believed dead, right? Presumed dead. He gets uh, he he gets himself into. But he Stillwell's never believed house. she was dead. Well, he yeah he never firmly believed. But he, actually, if you remember, he when he's talking to Huey, he's like, either someone killed her or she killed herself. Yeah. So like even he has that part of him where like after he talks to his sister, sister right. he's like, yeah, all right, you know, he's got that in him. But he wants Homelander dead one way or another. Or he knows he can't kill Homelander, so he wants to hurt him. So he breaks into Stillwell's house. Yeah. Yeah, he wants some kind of justice, right? And his justice is hurting Homelander as bad as he got hurt. So he breaks into Stillwell's house and straps a whole bunch of C4 to her body, and Homelander lands. <clears throat> I do love, while he's talking to Stillwell, when he realizes Homelander lands there, while he talks to him through the ceiling, through the second floor... With, just like with a normal voice, he's just talking to him like he's in the room with him because of the super hearing thing. I love how, like, and they don't even touch on it. Like, I know you can hear me when I'm. Yep. He just talks to him like, hey, you know, okay, cool, big boy, you're here. Yep. Come on down, whatever. You know, why don't you come down here and let's talk? So they never, they don't over explain shit in this show, and I love that part about it. So Homelander shows up with the damn baby that he hates. In his arms, like all loving, like, hey, look what I got here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's this whole confrontation between him and uh, Butcher about why Butcher's so pissed off at him, right? And they do something similar in the comics, but they're, uh, Homeland is trying to figure out who the hell are you? Why do you hate me? He doesn't figure it out as quick as he does in the show, right? Right. And, and it's really cool in the comic the way they do it. But, uh, when they do it in the show, uh, you know, they're going back and forth and Homelander tells him, no, your wife liked it. <laughs> she liked it a lot. You know, he's like, basically he made it seem like she was a groupie yeah. that wanted to screw him, you know? And, uh, I, I thought that was fucked up again, going to, uh, what you took out of the scene of her leaving the office. Okay. And because that's what I initially thought too. But then I was like, yeah, well, you know, she also just, she kind of had that FFL going on, you know, like, <laughs> Either way, I guess either way she would have had it, but, you know, you don't know what the hell is going on there. So, and I think that's where you're going to find out in season two more of right. that story, yeah. right? Because what happens is, uh, since he's like, all right, Butcher says, I'm going to hold, uh, I've got uh, Stillwell here, you know, and Homelander's like, what do you expect to get out of this? And he says, I just want you to hurt as much as I did. Yeah. So he, so he establishes right there that he has no expectation of walking out of there, you know. And Homelander's like, oh, well, yeah, he puts the baby down the, the bassinet there and just turns around to Stillwell, kind of basically gets her to confess to him that she's afraid of him, and then he kills her. Yep. He laser beams him, her right through her eyes, fries her brain, and that's an awesome moment there because I was like, holy shit. I knew it was going to happen right when he grabbed her by the head. I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> like, this is gonna be bad. Well, but, we kind of skipped over it, but part of the reason that he did that was because remember he got two different stories about his baby. Yes, right. yes, yeah. yes mm-hmm. yeah. So yeah, and, so. and that was that. That was I think that was really the motivation for him killing her because he's like, you care about this baby that you have over here that I just shoved in the bassinet, but you didn't care about my baby. Right. right. Baby. Yes, and he went after the dude in Germany again. Yeah. Beat it out of him basically. Yeah. Off screen. Yeah, off screen, beats it out of him, comes back to her. So he fries her. So then there you're like, dude, Butcher's a dead man. Because yeah. like, now he's got no leverage on him. Mm-hmm. And he says, well, fuck it. And he lets go of the damn uh, detonator. <laughs> yeah. I was like, holy shit, this thing just got really. <laughs> yeah. like, I had no idea what the hell they were going to do with that, right? So then, guys, someone pick it up from there. So how does he survive the blast? Well, so Butcher, Butcher, that's how fast Homelander is. What's interesting is Homelander brings him out of there. Yeah, what's interesting is for for a minute, you don't know that he did. Like you see him laying in the grass, and you think maybe all right, this is a 
Right. Everything goes but white. He's in, he's in heaven. Yeah, that's what I thought at first. I'm like, yeah. this is a afterlife thing or a heaven or a, he's having a, you know, these are the last thoughts that sort of fleet go fleeting I through his brain. I figured they weren't going to go that cheesy with it, but I was trying to figure out in my own head how the hell they were going to play it. Was it was a gladiator homage. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, I love that movie, by the way. Yeah, me too. And then <laughs> one more tangents. And then uh, Butcher opens his eyes, and you see he's laying in this in this lawn, and he looks, and there's a the this, sprinklers going off. Around. Yeah, this sort yeah. of very traditional, you know, house. American. Yeah, and uh, water too. And then out comes uh, a kid. It looks to be eight or nine years old, blonde hair. Uh, Homelander's there, and he says something to the kid, and then he's like. Oh, mommy didn't tell you. Oh, you're my son, and then you see Butcher's wife Becca step out. Well, he tells Butcher, "You're welcome." Yeah, he, t- he tells Butcher, "You're welcome." Yeah, man. he's yeah. You realize that Homelander saved him, um, and that uh, he's taken him now to this house, and and then there's the kid, uh, Homelander's kid, and Becca, and she realizes, "Uh oh, it's Butcher." She's awkwardly caught. You, it's hard to tell what the look on her face is, if it's shock or guilt or something else. Um, I yeah, I think I, I think it's purposely welcome. hard. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Anne. Oh, I'm sorry, Paul. I don't think you're welcome to Butcher was Homelander saying, hey, look, she's still alive. Yeah, well, this is sort of a big fuck you from Homelander, but we don't get to know why. <laughs> right. Not yet. They're saving that one. Yeah, and so, and if you've read the comic, you still wouldn't know why. I don't think because this is sort of a different. It's a completely different take on it. Yeah. We don't. We don't know what's happening. Yeah, and again, like I'm still early enough in the comic where I didn't know if that actually happened, but I haven't seen anything like that in the comic yet. So I was like, "Holy shit, this is like w- a way yeah. different take." Uh, well, yeah. technically, it would be a way different take because he says in the comic that he killed that kid. Right. So, but... Yeah. No. She. She. She is. They're, they don't exist in the comic, for sure. Yeah, they're done they don't there. exist. Correct. But much like The Walking Dead, where you know Laurie yeah. lived for a while or whatever. And I don't know how many guesses it would have taken me to guess that ending, based on where we were a minute beforehand when yeah. you know, when when Homelander puts the I beams through her head. Like I don't know how many guesses, but it it's double digits before it, it I would, it would have, have taken there. me all of them. Yeah, yeah all of the all guesses. Of I'm, I'm the same way. So. I, I'm I'm usually pretty good at guessing what's going to happen, yeah. And I piss Becca off every show we watch because I'm like, you know what's going to, and then it's like 20 minutes later. It's going to be like, like fuck you, it's that guy, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, well, here's how so I do this, this all yeah, the time. This is what I loved about this show is that I couldn't guess anything no. right. Yeah. If I just had to pick one thing to say, it was the wrong thing every time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The minute they had two stories about the baby, I figured. That at least the kid was alive, not necessarily Becca, but that was like on my, like the fringe of my, oh wait, this, is, this might happen because there, why are there two stories about this baby? Yeah. Right, right. What I, happens to her? And what I really liked about this was sometimes in shows, they'll give you that stuff early, right? Like episode three or four, so you've got time. Apparently Anne got in the bath or something yeah. because her phone went underwater. <laughs> like... You have to. You have a, an entire episode or more in in the time you've heard the first story of the kid, right? That kills Becca on the way out during delivery, yeah. and then it's two or three episodes later you hear a second version, and and that gives you time to sort of in your own mind piece it together. Uh huh. Yeah. And so, that's where you can do that. Like, oh, I I can sort of see how this is going. Like, it all came together in the last maybe ten minutes of the final episode. Yeah. yeah, and the other thing I did like to speak on Eric's point is um, not only did it throw me off, which is hard for these kind of shows to throw me off like that, but it threw me off and still I liked it. Yeah. I, I liked right. what they did with it, yep. where a lot of times they'll throw me off and I'll be like, ah, you ruined it. You know? But they did it in a good way every yeah. time. And I was like, oh, shit, it's kind of cool. It wasn't a dream. It wasn't, you know... Yeah. It was. It wasn't cheesy. All right, so we're, we're ninety minutes in, which is usually our cutoff for for content. Yeah. So, um, do you, let's close this out with saying, um, would you guys recommend this? I think for all of us. Oh, I'm not going to speak for all of you. Well, I would definitely so, recommend it to anybody that loves a dark comedy because well, this I is loved, dark. All right, I loved your comedy. closing thought. Your closing thoughts line is. Yeah. Um, what kind of person would like it? And I think I yeah. already covered that in the very beginning of this episode. Yeah. It's like if you're listening to us, you'd like this show. Yeah, yeah. You, you definitely gotta you gotta be able to appreciate 
really dark humor. Yeah. Like, yeah. people are dying and exploding in their asshole contents are on the wall yep. kind of humor. I'm not sure how else to say it. But Dolphins that. are flying through windshields. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and their asshole contents are on a semi-truck, <laughs> but yeah. <clears throat> Same thing. It's incredibly well-written, and the character development, even me not knowing anything about the comic, the characters are really well-written, and it's really hard to take a show where everybody's an asshole yeah. and actually make you like at least some component of the character. Yeah, yeah. so not, ultimately, not yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, I think the last time they did that was Friends, right? Yeah, ult- <laughs> no, <laughs> ultimately they have 13 assholes, and somehow they make half of them really bad and half of them likable. Yeah. And yeah. they're all really terrible assholes. And it's not the ones they're, you would have thought at the beginning. Yeah, 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 and they're amazing characters. And that's like, to Anne's point, the writing on this show is amazing. Yep. To- the, the soundtrack, the, the way they drop like music into this is like genius. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So, yeah, I, I think there's something for everybody. Well, okay. Not something for everybody. Not everybody, everybody. The, the remotely easily offended will want to steer clear Oof, of this. Yeah. Yeah. Who's your your favorite character? My favorite character? Anybody. Yeah, all you guys. Who's your favorite? I I like Butcher a lot. Yeah. A lot. I love what Carl Urban did with him. I think think it's Carl Urban that I like more than Butcher, but I really like the Butcher character. It's his portrayal of it. Because even the comics, he's like that, but he's so much worse than the comic. I I love Frankie because he is just like, He's not what he seems, and yeah. he, he, he's got more depth than I think anybody else does, which I really like about him. Yeah, yeah, he's like Shrek. He's an onion. He's got layers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I think, honestly, uh, to go back to what I said earlier, I think my favorite character so far is Mother's Milk. Just the way that guy portrays him is like, he's deep. And, and But just that loyalty that he's got to the yeah. boys, you know. Yeah, and the, he way, the way he looks out for him. Huey, too, where he's like, Dude, you got to pay the price, and when he realizes you, he's ready to pay it. Yeah, that, he's the first one to be like, you know, it's a butcher. Hey, lay off him or, yeah. or whatever. You know, like right. he, he takes him in more than anybody else does. You know, so it's just the way he is. He, and I'm looking forward to what they do with all these characters. Yeah, I'm, I like all of those characters. I like, I really like the butcher character. I like Huey because he's sort of thrown into this horrible position, but but. And you see at the beginning, every time something happens, he's about to have a panic attack. Yep. And then by the end, by, by episode eight, he's just like, no, I got this. Yeah. Like he, yeah, sort, I mean, he sort of grows into that he, stuff. He ultimately becomes, of, of the boys in the first eight episodes, he is the real killer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He, becomes he the is the like one butcher. that, yeah. yeah. He oh, is the no, one no, that no, 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 is no, no, what no, Butcher no. should be. He, that is him. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Ann. What would you say? I, I said you can only eat so many pizza rolls before you just lose your shit. Yeah, right. I guess so. I don't know. I've been eating a lot of pizza rolls. I also, uh, of the heroes, I like Starlight the best. Well, well she's uh, the only on. She's, Ann, the, only, she's Ann, the only one who wants to do good. Who's yeah. Ann's favorite character? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, I like Frenchie. The, the only oh, yeah, one Frenchie, I, okay. I, I didn't, they didn't do anything with Queen Maeve. They literally did nothing with her character. Which no. was a little different. they tried. They they hinted at, at her being sort of a, a lesbian that Yeah. Yeah, but you know I was that hides yeah. that relationship. Right after we got past our our favorite characters, I was gonna go, you know, my typical John Dirty Old Man route and be like, Well, there's Maeve and Starlight, so yeah, you know, I'll keep watching this show just for those two. So th- <laughs> that was something that we didn't touch on, but um at the risk of going way too far into this episode, um her being a lesbian and and being sort of not comfortable with it, I think that is more a nod to the whole religious Christian aspect that they were trying to play out, where it was like Vought was kind of like um, both supporting and supported by these religious organizations that were feeding them a lot of money and treated yeah. the superheroes like little Gosh. Jesuses or something. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. like there was even a part where. Um, uh, Homelander is like flying over the crowd, yeah. like on a Jesus and I think on that's the cross. His... Yeah. That's his moment of really drinking his own Kool Aid. Oh, for sure. Like they, they show that there, like so, where he's like he believes his own hype. There's definitely political commentary within that that we don't sure. have to go into. Yeah. but I mean that's yeah. intentional with the social conservatives and the big Vought corporation that they're trying to make a connection. And I think Mavs. All I was getting at is Queen Ma- Queen Maves Mavs. What Maeve. Oh, Maeve. I don't even want to say anymore. Maeve. Queen Maves. Queen Maves thing. 
about being a lesbian was only for to add to effect to that, not for character development. But it, but it was so, like, lightly handled, it was non-existent. The other thing that's weird is, like, like okay, if all, of these pe- if all of these soups are babies being made, why does Starlight have parents? Like, what's the story there? Oh, cause because that's... they left them with their parents because they learned their lesson with Homelander. Correct. Yeah. They, they needed uh-huh. parental guidance so they didn't become, like, super violent like, like, Homel- like Homelander. Like, like Homelander had yeah. those hidden violent tendencies yeah. where he could just kill people without yeah. a second thought or 270 people on a plane. Now, they don't touch that. Oh, they don't, oh, they don't touch that. Yeah, they don't I touch mean, on that in the comic. The yeah. compound V is what helps the humans. I mean, they do. They do. They make the soups, but do yeah. they make all of the soups in the comics? I don't think they did. I, they're not at that point and the, yeah. the point I'm in. I, I will say, though, that the show was saying, though, like they created all of them as yeah. a, it's a business as entity. A business. Yeah, yeah, that's what the show is. I think the comic took a little bit of a different route, but it's yeah. close. It's very close. Two things that we didn't talk about is the the idea that when they needed an enemy, Homelander goes and creates super bad guys mm-hmm. and that how messed amazing. up that is. Yeah, that was yeah. Right. That was, so, that was cool though. And and that scene where she's like, "What is Lockheed Martin's number one seller? The Patriot missile. What's how about General Dynamics? How about Northrop? Oh, yeah. well, look what we've got. Yeah. And and now we're the only one. I really so, did like that. Yeah, I did too. As a the the whole episode where they're at the Believe Festival and stuff, that was the closest I've come in this to getting really sort of offended because as a Christian, that trope of Right, we're gonna get on stage and believe, and then backstage blow a guy. Right, is is overdone and overworn. Yeah, a- and you're like, well, of course the Ezekiel character, who's a Christian, of course he's gonna be yeah, closeted gay. To be fair right. though, that was specifically televangelist sort of thing right, that yeah, they that set up the there. Yeah, time. it wasn't. I know people will read it as Christian, but it really wasn't. That was that. Your, but he's the only um, Christian in the show. Like, yeah, true. When, you, when you're the only your... Christian in the show. That's what you get. Yeah. But, but they but set it up as more a... more like that Joel, whatever the hell his yeah, name Joel was. Yeah, Joel Osteen. Where, where Joel he Osteen. would like shut his church yeah, down exactly. to hurricane victims. This, like, is the, this is the money-making yeah, yeah. side yeah. of televangel- televangelistic I mean, yeah, I, like, Christianity. Yeah. It's, all the, it's, it's all the guy... Like, so anybody that watches it from the other point of view will say, oh, that's all Christians. And yeah. then you watch it and you say, oh, you're trying to say that's all Christians. But I don't yeah. necessarily yeah. know that's what it was. And I get your argument. Because, you know, again, you guys know I was raised Roman Catholic. And not every priest touched the boy but most of them did <laughs> a few of them fucking did and then they hit him but you know whatever yeah. so yeah so they played on that right hard on yeah. that well, one. so, so, so Anne was also, also raised Roman Catholic what, what did Anne just say the, the whole we family I don't know I'm just gonna let her come walked in walked right over on her uh, I was ju- I was sorry. I was saying is it that way in the comic? Is Ezekiel like? Do they play this whole thing up in the comic? Uh, the religious part of it, yes. yes. Yeah. 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 Uh huh. Yeah. It's not necessarily that way, but it, it but but it is still done. Yeah. Yeah. Now I I understand that there are televangelists that do this. I mean, there's a guy who begs his congregation because he needs a new G four. Literally needs a new G four to go spread the gospel, and he can't do it in his G three. <laughs> right. Um, and he needs a G four. Yeah, this iPhone That's 7 just isn't cutting it, fuckers. That's true. Yeah. Um, which is a you know private jet. Yeah. And um, but when it's the only Christian that you show, and he's the trope of you're like, okay, I get it. I mean, technically it but wasn't so, because Starlight actually believes. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's now, what I was going to say. It does so, cause her to question her faith. So, so, so Starlight, though, Starlight is the the real Christian, like truly believes is, a, and she's and being her exploited. Par- her powers are literally light. I mean, yeah, and she's yeah. being exploited by this organization. So this isn't Christianity. This that's why I'm saying it's like it is a piece of Christianity that they're making fun of. I think. Yeah. I, I felt it was more to show her naivete that this is like part of her. Fabric, and that's why, she, like, she was shocked and appalled to find out that the seven, you know, actually have, you know, feet of clay. Yeah, they're not, you know, that 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 was just like part of her backstory included all of this stuff, and that that's why she thought that, like, this was she was doing the right thing by wanting to be one of them. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it, they had to play, I guess, both stories hard to one direction to make it seem that bad you know what i mean right so but i agree with paul though it was pretty heavy-handed oh, yeah. no, it was yeah. heavy-handed it was yeah 
I'm not arguing that point. I just, yeah, I, I just, know. I just won't recommend this to anybody at church. It's fine. Well, yeah, you know, no, no, I, <laughs> I, I wouldn't have. Would you tell anybody at church to listen to this podcast? You know what? Be, <laughs> beyond, um, beyond that, I wouldn't have recommended it to anybody in church. Right. You take all that out of it. <laughs> but the only other thing we did not talk about. What did we was start the, with? The a a gangbang on a young blonde girl? I'm not right. sure yeah, that yeah, yeah. you yeah, could yeah. recommend no, this. That to was anybody. okay. <laughs> Sodom and Gomorrah. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Uh, we didn't talk about the superhero support group. Oh, oh, oh yeah. My God, okay. Oh, my God. The guy who gets his dick frozen, cut, off. frozen off, cut yeah, off. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That, that whole scene was amazing. Yeah. And that's the marketing guy. That's the one that yeah. that, that gives Starlight the new suit, right? Oh, I didn't even story. realize that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. the marketing yeah. guy. Oh, I didn't yeah. even put that together. I'm no, slow. it's okay, Sorry, Eric. Guys. They don't all look alike. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, we're going to hear from the nice sponsors on that one. Huh? It's been nice talking to you guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was about to say, we're about to hear from the sponsors on that one. Yeah. Right. We're going to lose we gotta, our we got to get sponsors, and then we'll That's hear right. from them better. Then we'll, then we'll lose them. <laughs> so I don't listen to anything before episode 40. Uh, we're <laughs> fucked. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's 43, or is it 42, John? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I can't count. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. You know, you can start releasing these things. <laughs> no. Uh, I don't yeah. have time for that. Thanks. <laughs> no, you can write seven-page dissertations that we're going to talk about, but you can't release the podcast. Yeah, that's exactly we don't have time for this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that, that's – I think that's the end of the topic now. Yes. Um, obviously, this thing is geek-approved. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. Geek-approved. Yeah. yeah. And Anne, is it not geek-approved? <laughs> She's okay. one of us. <laughs> I said the show is geek one approved, and then one of us. Yeah, and Eric's like, "Is it not geek approved?" I'm like, "You're one of us already." <laughs> <laughs> you are. All right, yeah. Ann. Well, thank you very much for being our first guest caller. I think that worked pretty well, actually. Yeah. Um, that that worked well for an hour and a half. I won't. I don't. I won't <laughs> necessarily. So sorry. I won't necessarily bring you here for a podcast, but I will bring you here when you're when you're in town in October. So. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll make a special recording. We can, we can have a a non-recorded podcast. That's going to be our Halloween shit. We can get together for a special uh, Halloween episode. All right. All right. Oh, look, Eric doesn't even want to be bothered. Look at him, son of a bitch. Well, thank I'm going to make him do it. Join you guys, and I know I added nothing as the new LCD. But no, yeah. actually, no, this did. Great. That was really fun. Thank you very yes. much. Thank you very much. It was awesome. Thanks, Ann. We appreciate it. So uh, I think that's about it. Uh, you guys hit us up and let us know what you think of the boys, because by now, if you've listened this far, you've watched the damn show, or you're even dumber, dumber than I am. Um, so check out the show and let us know what you think. Uh, hit us up at whatifgeeks.com. Uh, what if geeks at gmail.com and uh, Twitter, Instagram, and all that other shit. And that's all of us. So, good night, Tony. Good night, Mom. Good night, Ann. Good night, Paul. Good night, Ann. <laughs> good night, Ann. Uh oh. <laughs>